بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه تسليما كثيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are going to continue with our second installment in our coverage of the text Anatul Mutafahim في Adab Mutalim by Sheikh Muhammad Hassan Khadim In the next section فصل في معهية علم وفق in this very short section, he details the reality and the definition of knowledge and fiqh and understanding. Kala rahimahullah, hadha wa hadu al-ilmi wasfun yadharu bihi li man kama bihi ma yudkaru. He says that knowledge is defined and characterized by uh, its manifestation to the one who acts accordingly not necessarily to what is known. In other words, that knowledge is what one has its karma on. By, if knowledge is known, by how it's applied. A knowledgeable person is known by the way he behaves, the way that he acts. It is not the amassing of a lot of information and with no application. Knowledge essentially without application, without action, in reality is not knowledge at all. Then he says, Ma'rifatun nafsi lima laha wa ma huwa alayha haddun fiqhin rusima. He said that the knowledge, knowledge of self or the knowing of the self and what it owes and what is what is obligatory on it is the concept and definition of fiqh. In other words, that knowing the self and what it owes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by way of belief, by way of, of, of how to, how to behave, the legal rulings of his actions. One must have an understanding of his, the, the state of the self, the, the maqam that one attains. In other words, at the time of Abu Hanifa, Frick was understood to be the way in which we believe in Allah, the obligation that we act according to understanding how to believe in Allah. What not to believe in Allah. For example, Abu Hanifa, he authored a text called Fiqh al-Akbar. And it wasn't a book, uh, of Fiqh dealing with the legal rulings of Tahara or Salat or buying and selling or marriage and divorce. No, it was a book that dealt with Aqidah. Because Aqidah is something that essentially is binding on the heart. It's in the heart. It's what you believe in the heart. Not necessarily by the information you have in the mind. And so here he says that if uh, having an understanding of what the self owes to Allah by his action. To this Allah said لِيَتَفَكَّهُ فِي الدين, That one has understanding in deen. One has understanding in the religion. So here fiqh be ma'ana faham. The fiqh means linguistically understanding. Or he says, ahuwa irfanu daqiq al-ilmi. This is understanding, a definition of, 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 of fiqh could be understanding the ambiguities of knowledge, the secrets of knowledge. Or he says here, the gamaduhu. The, the, the subtleties, the unknown outward secrets, the unknown outward, I'm sorry, the un, the unknown inward secrets of knowledge. So having, he says, ma'rifatullahi wa ma'lahu wa ma'rifatul nafsi wa ma'aleha. Knowing, having ma'rifa of Allah. Being connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a profound way. Knowing the self. The state of the self. This is fiqh. 
ثم قال والعلم العمل ترك العاجل لأجل تحصيل العمر العاجل he says that this is the saying of Abu Hanifa that knowledge is to act by leaving the the temporal world the dunya leaving the life of this world for the purpose of obtaining the life of the next world. Zuhud. This is zuhud. This is asceticism. This is putting the, the dunya in your hand, not in your heart. Not being attached to the dunya. Leaving those dunyavi things in lieu of seeking out those akhiri things that we can obtain to take with us to the next life. That we can take with us to the grave. This is knowledge, preparing for the grave, preparing for the next life. Then he says, وَطَالِبُ الْعِلْمِ عَلَىٰ كِسْمَيْنِ طَالَبُ الْعِلْمِ حَالِ الْفَرْدُ عَيْنِ فَيَدْرِي مَرْعٌ هُكْمَ مَا يَقَعُ لَهُ مِنَ الْإِبَادَةِ وَمَنْ مُعَامَلَةِ That the second, that knowledge is uh, divided into two parts. Seeking knowledge. Or knowledge, rather, is of two parts, the Father Ain and the Father Kifaya. So here he deals first with the Father Ain, the individual obligations. He says that, um, he says for an individual to know what is placed on him, meaning his obligations, from his acts of worship, from the acts of worship, and from his social transactions. So, one must know the ahkam of how to worship Allah, how to gain purification, how to pray, how to pay zakah, how to fast, the legal rulings of how to make hajj. Likewise, one must know the legal rulings of marriage and divorce, buying and selling, and so on and so forth. And uh, these uh uh, become incumbent upon an individual uh, when the individual, at the moment the individual it becomes a wajib on him or he seeks to to act on any of these, it becomes an obligation to know this legal ruling. For example, when it is an obligation to pray, one must know the legal rulings of prayer. Likewise, one must know the legal rulings of tahara in order to pray. Or when it is, it becomes an obligation for one to get married. Or when one seeking to get married. It's an obligation to understand and to know the legal rulings of marriage and divorce. Likewise for buying and selling. When one seek, is seeking to buy or to sell something. It is incumbent to know and to understand the legal rulings of buying and selling. This he says, for Yaduri Maraun Hukmu Ma Yaka Ula Min Min al Ibadati wa Min Muamala. Fuma call or waki unfil bali min ahyani for walka fa ila ala ayani. Then he says that the second type of knowledge, the second type of knowledge is what is placed on some of the people. From time to time. Not on every individual. This is a communal obligation. This is for the kifaya. For example, the awqati kassalat, uh, kassalat janazah, wal iyadat al marid. So, uh, knowing the times and the prayers of the funeral prayers, or visiting the sick. These are aspects that are for the kifaya. They're, they're incumbent or they're obligatory upon some of the people, not every individual in the community. So some of the people must do it to free the rest of the people from its obligation. In other words, to put it simply, Some of the people must do it. Not all the people must do it. However, he says, "Lakin idal ba'du bihi lam yakumi fi baldatin kano idan fil ma'thami." 
He says that if it is not established by some of the people in a particular community, then all of the people, all of the community is in sin. So if nobody does it, everybody is sinful. This is for the Kifaya. The last line he deals with, he says, وَشَرَفُ الْإِلْمِ الَّذِي اِخْتَصَوْ بِهِ الْإِنْسَانُ بَادٍ لَمْ نَتْلِ بِالْجَلْبِهِ He says, and the honor of knowledge, the honor that the human being uh, attained by being knowledgeable is well known. It's not a secret. Everyone knows, uh, understands the fada'il ilm. Uh, or the fadaila amal, know the virtue of knowledge or the virtue of good action. This is detailed very well in the Quran and very well in the Sunnah of our Prophet ﷺ. So the virtue of this of these individuals who are knowledgeable is what we're seeking. We're seeking to. Be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by what we know, by what we learn, by the way we conduct ourselves. This is the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so with that, he, he, he can, he's going to continue to give us in this, in this book, jewels that we can take along this path, along this journey. So with that, he ends this next section. He ends this section and moves on to the next section, which we will, which we will continue with our next video or our next installment at another time, insha'Allah. Akuli kawli hadha wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.